It feels like this Ace of Swords energy is the realization, is that aha moment, is that moment that the light bulb goes off in your head saying, whoa, I gotta do something differently here. I have to make a choice, Ace of uh, the, uh, the Lovers. And it's this realization that is causing you to release something, Four of Pentacles, and break yourself out of some sort of mental prison, mental confinement. Again, I do feel like this is about releasing toxic, uh, releasing a form of toxic masculinity. The emperor was at the bottom. Underneath the emperor is temperance. Underneath temperance is the king of pentacles to justice. Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to Morning Coffee, your collective tarot reading. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Happy Monday to you. I hope you guys had a an excellent, excellent weekend. I had a nice weekend. Um, okay, first things first, there's going to be a little bit of story time, so check the description box below. There you can find the timestamps to get yourself straight to the reading there. You can also check the pinned comment down in the comment section below. Of course, general spiel, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It is so great to see you all. Thank you all to all the new subscribers that came in since, well, over the weekend, yeah? Welcome to the club. It, welcome to the Unicorn Herd. It's so awesome to have you guys here. Um, Please keep in mind, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This is also a fairly timeless reading, okay? These morning coffee collective collective readings really don't have anything to do with the date. It's really just about the energy for the collective and what messages spirit wants to bring forward for us at this time. So even if this reading or this message doesn't necessarily resonate for you, I highly recommend that you check out the morning coffee playlist, which is up in the top right of your screen. Also, you can find the link to that in the description box and down in the pin, pinned comment below. There is over two years worth of daily readings in that, <laughs> in that playlist, you guys, okay? And if you really go back in the archives, you will find that those readings were dated in the very beginning for the first year, I think, or something like that. But it doesn't matter. Don't pay attention to the dates. If you're looking for messages, if you're looking for guidance, and you're feeling in your intuition that morning coffee is the right place for you to find that guidance, then just start digging. Go into that playlist and pay attention to the, the titles of the readings because the titles are going to give you the understanding as to whether or not the reading may resonate for you or not. Don't pay attention to the dates. Don't pay attention to the dates, sorry, enunciation. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, um, just a little bit about my weekend. It was a really awesome weekend. Um, I ended up on Saturday night. There was the very first Pride Parade here in Rincon, Puerto Rico, and it was awesome. Of course, I was there. Um, which is, it, and, and it's funny because I actually, I knew it was happening this weekend, kind of like, because I had heard about it. I heard it was coming. I didn't know when exactly it was happening, but then my intuition all week was like, Eric, that parade is happening this weekend. And I was like, oh yeah, that's nice. Eric, the parade is happening this weekend. Oh yeah, that's nice. They should have a good time. You know, have fun, be out there. But then, but see, that's me being like in complete 100% hermit mode right now. Like not even really trying to, not really trying to be out like that right now. Just trying to work, focus on what, what we're doing here with the collective. This has been giving me so much life lately that it's like, this is really all I want to do. This is really all, like, I don't even really want to hang out. But I ended up going on Saturday night, and it was so much fun. We had an absolute blast. And I'm actually very happy that I went because I got to participate. I got to walk in the very first Pride March here in Rincón. I mean, they, they, they've they been doing it in San Juan, Puerto Rico, but that's, that's on the other side of the island. That's the big city of the island. Actually, San Juan is the capital of Puerto Rico, so... It makes sense. It's literally a big city over there. Um, so that totally makes sense. But it was the first time they had it here in Rincón on the west side of the island. So I feel very proud, very honored to be able to have participated in that. So that was a good thing. Even though the hermit in me was like, man, I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to be out there with all those people, but it's okay. I made it through. We're all good. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. 
So let's just get into it. So for today, maybe for this week, I'm not sure. I'm kind of feeling like for this week, but then, you know, energies shift and change all the time. But for right now, for today at least, we are going to be using the True Heart Intuitive Tarot. This is one of my favorite decks. I love this deck. My mom got it for me. Thanks, mom. And then we're going to be using the Los Carabello deck for clarification. Please don't mind my moisture. I showered this morning. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this here. Let's see what we've got. What messages do we have for the collective for today? Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representations of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and places and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys, we're going to give this five shuffles, yeah? One. For the collective, this is two. Oh, also, if you haven't had a chance to do so yet, check out the uh, Your Week Ahead session, the live session that we had on Saturday. That's three. Link to that can also be found up in the top right of your, of your screen, or you can find it in the pinned comment down below or in the description box. Yes, this is four. Also, if you are watching this on like Roku or um, Apple TV or anything like that that doesn't really give you access to the description box or the, um, or the comments section, if you would like to watch Your Week Ahead, the, that live session that we did over the weekend, just go to my channel and it's the feed, it, well, actually, I don't even know if this works on Roku or Apple TV or anything like that. But you can either go to my channel, like the home page of the channel, and it's a featured, um, it's the featured uh, video on the top, in the at the top of the channel. If that doesn't work, or if that's not available for you, just go into the the posted videos. Unfortunately, I don't have Roku or or Apple TV, so I don't know exactly how this works for you guys. But it's in there. Um, either go to the the recent videos, or if you if there's like the live live videos tab it should be in there too okay sorry guys i don't i don't know how that works i don't have one anyway uh, i lost count now but i think this is five let's go with that okay let's just get into this so what do we have going on for the collective what do we want to discuss with the collective today please spirit what do we want to discuss with the collective that's, oh, that's, oh, that's enough right there. Okay. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the emperor. Now, if you remember, uh, last, last Friday, the, um, the message was very, was heavily oriented around, centered around, uh, uh, a level of masculine energy coming through very strongly for the collective. So we have the emperor starting off here at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the emperor, you do have temperance. And then there's the king of pentacles with justice. Okay. So it looks like we're potentially still in this energy. Um, the emperor here is representing setting boundaries. Okay. What I'm getting for this energy for the collective right now is this is just the overall energy with the emperor temperance king of pentacles and then justice all right there is a level of um well first of all i want to say that it feels like for the collective right now or for this message it still feels like masculine energy is in the forefront of your focus or is in the forefront of your um your interactions with the three-dimensional world with your external world and all that stuff but what this actually feels like here is 
there is a balancing act that's happening, okay? I'm actually also feeling that for some of you, this masculine energy that's represented by the Emperor and the King of Pentacles, but there is a level of bringing that into balance for you. This is, I'm, I'm having, kind of having difficulty putting this into words, but it just feels like there's a harmonization, there's a union between the masculine and feminine within you that's coming into play, but it feels like there are some, of, there are some aspects here um, that the Emperor represents that's trying to find a harmonized balance within you. So this is like, um, you know how like when a pendulum swings, you go back from one extreme to the next. So it could have been a situation in which you were very much in your feminine energy and that was twisted and toxic and that needed healing and it received the healing. It received sufficient a sufficient amount of healing and integration for now the pendulum to swing to the other side where you're dealing with the masculine side of things and so there's a level of toxicity and and conformity and extreme masculine or extreme twisted twisted masculine energy that seems to be coming into balance here it's like you're finding that balance within yourself so that both sides are harmonized within this union okay so actually what i'm feeling is for some of you you are actually working on or being faced with or are dealing with some elements of toxic masculinity that are basically written i just heard written into our genetic codes that's very interesting um and it seems like that's what but see okay what i'm getting in terms of that in terms of masculine or, or it's not just the masculine. There's also toxic elements to the feminine that are kind of written into our genetic, genetic codes, I guess. That's what I heard. And what Spirit is kind of showing me is um, it's from centuries of, of um, toxicity. It's, from, it's, it's like it's written into our genetic memory. And so now there are elements as we go through this time period where we have this balancing and this harmonization of masculine and, and masculine and, and and feminine energy this union within us that's that's really being worked on now that we are erasing those toxic elements and basically rewriting the codes but rewriting but but writing them from what uh, rewriting them back to where they were when they were balanced when they were healed when they were healthy when, and, all that, and all that stuff Okay, you have a lot of other cards here though, um, which are good. So let's talk about that. You have the Wheel of Fortune, you have the Ace of Cups, okay? This is a very strong energy. This feels like the main energy here. Ace of Cups is a cup, is the unconditional love being, uh, is, the, is the, the unconditional love that pours down from source, God, God source creator from the universe into us. That, this Ace of Cups energy is what's influencing a pretty massive, or I guess we could say decent change. Ew, I didn't look at that before I started recording here. Sorry guys. Um, you have this with the Four of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, the Eight of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, and then the Lovers. All right. So the lovers is representing this union, this harmonization, this this balance between masculine and feminine energy. For some of you, it is also representing a choice. And this choice feels very specifically like how do you want to show up in the world? Uh, there's a OK, what I just heard specifically was there's a choice in terms of the healing that it is you are doing, okay? Between the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Lovers, and the Ace of Cups. Look at this, three Aces so far, okay? Lots of new beginnings. But it feels like this Ace of Swords energy is the realization, is that aha moment, is that moment that the light bulb goes off in your head saying, whoa, I gotta do something differently here. I have to make a choice ace of uh, the uh, the lovers and it's this realization that is causing you to release something four of pentacles and break yourself out of some sort of mental prison mental confinement again i do feel like this is about releasing toxic uh, releasing a form of toxic masculinity um but that is all again in service of who you know you have yourself to be at this point that's what the king of pentacles represents in this energy again we're back at the bottom of the deck so the, the emperor was at the bottom underneath the emperor is temperance underneath temperance is the king of pentacles to justice now for some of you specifically this king of pentacles is representing the extreme 
um, materialistic focus. It just feels like a strong sense of materialism with the King of Pentacles, even though the King of Pentacles is also representing the energies of knowing who, who it is you truly are or having a deeper understanding of who you are at this point and being able to work from that place. So now there is a there is a level of integrity that's actually coming through with the King of Pentacles now that is causing you to reshape, refocus, rebalance your life. And then there is temp, uh, justice here being brought to your life, maybe even in terms of the past, Six of Pentacles, also the Two of Cups, okay? Um, yeah, the King of Pentacles is definitely representing a level of uh, uh, integrity, okay? Okay, you have one last card here that did fall face down. It is the Eight of Wands. This is a really good thing because with this Ace of Pen I'm sorry, Ace of Swords, and Four of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, this is letting go of some sort of materialistic aspect or letting go of some sort of situation or circumstance or, or, or a phase within your life that has had you stuck, has had you trapped, okay? You're literally going from the Eight of Swords to the Eight of Wands, but the Eight of Wands fell face down, okay? So this is a hidden aspect. This is something that's a little bit more internal. This is, you're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet but you're getting there for sure, for sure. I mean, look at this. You have all of these aces. You have the ace of swords, the ace of pentacles, the ace of cups here, right? And all of that is with the wheel of fortune. So everything is changing. Everything, everything is changing and everything is changing for the better. Everything is moving in a very excellent direction for you right now. I do feel like this might be a bit of a struggle just because of the fact that you have to make a choice here, a choice that serves your highest good at this point because that's the focus here, right? You have a choice to make, and that choice involves releasing yourself from burdens, from strife. Uh, Four of Pentacles literally is feeling like uh, purging, like like getting rid of a bunch of just a bunch of shit in your house that's just sitting there taking up space. Um, letting, literally, specifically for some of you, this is definitely letting go of physical objects that hold memories of past circumstances, the past you, um, you know, maybe even past lives. I did just hear that, but it doesn't have to be so like esoteric and woo woo as like, you know, you lived a life back in the 18th century and there's some artifact that your soul has a tie to that, you know, is taking up cluttering space in your life. No, it doesn't even have to be that deep. The old lives that we could potentially be talking about here are just the phases of this incarnation that seem to be cluttering up your space. That's very interesting, okay? It's very, very interesting. Clarification, all right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna get into some clarification. I'm using the Los Scarabeo deck for that today, skis. Um, I, I definitely wanna talk about the lovers with the ace, I'm sorry, with the four of pentacles and the eight of swords first. Yeah, so I'm gonna give this Five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. And this makes perfect sense that we would be talking about this because we definitely deal with a lot of this on my channel. If you're new to me, um, a little bit of a backstory. I just, I, when I first started my channel a little over three years, well, three, over three years ago now, um, it'll, it'll be, in, anyway, uh, when I started my channel, I was working exclusively with Twin Flame Energies because that's where I was at the time. Um, and I don't sit here and say that I'm never going to be a part of the Twin Flame Collective again. It's just, I've grown out of it to a point where I, that's not my focus any longer. And, but through the Twin Flame, my own expression of the Twin Flame journey and then, you know, working with everyone else that has been with me on the channel since, we've really gotten to the point where we are working on balancing, harmonizing, unionizing, and integrating both of our masculine and feminine energies. And this has been happening for the longest time and, and for the collective now, or at least the collective that I, the part of the collective that I channel for or whatnot, we've really been like masculine energy our own personal masculine energies have been the focus. And if you watch the readings from last week, you see that 
that, that it got to a point where you know masculine energies are really coming through and, and influencing us to set healthy boundaries and that's really what the emperor for the most part represents the emperor is the is not as compassionate and and emotional as the empress his counterpart but that's okay because that's her realm she deals with emotion she deals with fertility with receptivity with growing providing life to or uh, 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 providing a space for life to grow and flourish her counterpart in the emperor provides the structure and the boundaries and the protection to preserve that life and that's what's coming through here for the collective and it definitely feels like you or whomever is resonating with this reading right now you're starting to learn about the fine lines between being protective and guiding and 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 all that stuff being protective and being overbearing or toxic or controlling or manipulative you know that kind of energy okay that's where Temperance is coming into play. Temperance with the King of Pentacles is coming into play. They both wanted to come out at the same time just there, okay? All right, this is four. And this is five. Alrighty, kids. So let's get some clarification going. We're gonna start with the Four of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, and the Lovers. Can you clarify this for the Collective, please, Spirit? Okay, well, there's the last ace so far. Ace of Wands, all right? Um, so what the Ace of Wands is saying to me so far is that uh, you really are, it's like you're feeling inspired to do this. This is not something that, you know, the universe, the universe has pushed you towards kicking and screaming. The Ace of Wands is really, at this point, is feeling like you have this inspiration within you to work on this balance, to work on the fine details is what I just heard. It feels natural for you. It's just like you're ready to go. And even if it, even if that's because, you know, your life circumstances have gotten to the point where you really have no other choice, it doesn't feel like you're approaching this from the point of view of, I have no choice. It's like, I, what I'm feeling here is you're approaching this from the point of view of, I want to get this done. I want to have this balance. I want to make this right. And it could be coming from a level of frustration. That's fine. Basic, that's kind of how that's kind of how humans work a lot of the time we have to be pushed to the extremes to finally start putting you know to fixing things right okay so we have all four aces showing up here now ace of wands cups swords and pentacles this is a brand new be a complete brand new beginning all right that i feel like you're taking an active role in so let's talk about this four of pentacles eight of swords and the lovers what is this for the collective Please, spirit Well, first, okay, what I also just noticed here is that on the Four of Pentacles, you have a moth, or either a moth or a butterfly, whichever you want to describe it as. But to me, that's representing a level of transformation. And there also could be, maybe it's not necessarily that some of you are releasing something, it's that you're finally coming out of the cocoon here. The Four of Pentacles to the Eight of Swords could represent having, like, going through some sort of transformation coming out of the cocoon. But that that was just a cute little thing that I just saw. Okay, so what's clarifying this? At the bottom of the deck so far, you do have the Seven of Cups, but underneath the Seven of Cups is the Six of Wands. So the Seven of Cups is representing confusion, or it's representing a bunch of different options, or just a bunch of different things that are in front of you that you need to focus on, that you need to handle, that you need to deal with. But I feel like you're doing that well because what's coming through here is to clarify is the love of, no, the hermit, the queen of pentacles and the queen of wands. OK, this is a really good energy. Again, this transformation that you're going through or the choice that you're making to cut yourself free from some sort of mental imprisonment or to cut yourself to 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 release yourself from some sort of physical um, physically binding type of energy is coming from understanding who you are, understanding yourself, just like we said with this King of Pentacles here, right? And having a greater understanding of who it is that you are, what it is that you represent, or what it is that you bring into the world, understanding your, your value and your worth. Queen of Pentacles, so we have the King and the Queen of Pentacles showing up in the reading now. But then also with the Queen of Wands. Again, the Queen of Wands is another energy that feels just like this Ace of Wands in which 
you are in alignment with this right now. You are feeling like this is the right thing to go. You're probably feeling quite enthusiastic. You're probably taking, you know, initiative or it, the, all this change that's happening for us or for you is coming from this greater understanding of who you truly are. Having done the deep diving, having done the soul work, having done the, the inner discovery type of work to get into this place of understanding your worth and being in alignment with wanting to put bring something forward or just do what's right for yourself, okay? You do have the Five of Cups here. So um, this is the process of working yourself out. So remember, we have the Four of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, but with the lovers, right? That's what we're clarifying right now. And this is an energy of breaking yourself free from something. Either releasing something, releasing something's hold on you or breaking yourself out of a mental prison. Um, or both, okay? Couple or connected to that, you do have this Eight of Wands energy. But remember, the Eight of Wands fell out face down. So this is still something, this is still something internal, something kind of hidden. This is still something coming, okay? This is what you're working towards. Getting this freedom, this jailbreak, knowing or, or having the clear air or the clear environment to see your trajectory or to see your target and aim for it, shoot for it and hit it, right? But you're still, but we're not quite there yet, or at least for whomever is rep resonating with this reading, you're not quite there yet, because there still are some things that you need to process with the Five of Cups. There's one last card that's fallen face down. It is the Emperor. I'm sorry, not the Emperor, the Hierophant. Tough lessons, okay? Uh, uh, physical bound, tough lessons. So what's happening in, again, lots of masculine energy, okay? But what's really happening here as you're working on breaking yourself free, okay? And making the choice that's best for you. There seems to be a bit of a review process that's happening in terms of all the, the really strong and tough lessons that you've been working with or that you've been dealing with or just these physically oriented three-dimensional energies. And that's also where the Seven of Cups is coming through. The Seven of Cups is representing all of the things that could be swirling around your head, all of the different things that you have to think about or make sense of, or all of the different things that you have to work on letting go of, okay? And the Hierophant represents, it represents a struggle. This really is not going to be, it, either it's not going to be or it's just not easy for many of you or for whomever is resonating with this reading. Uh... I actually, I want to get, I would like to get a little bit more information on this Hierophant. What's the Hierophant for the Collective, please? What is the Hierophant representing for the Collective, please, Spirit? Aha, uh -huh. yes. It's literally, literally the Hierophant is saying, exactly, exactly. I was just going to say this, um, but then this card came out to, to clarify, to prove it. But the first card that came out to clarify the Hierophant is the Ten of Swords, and it did come out in reverse. So to me, this is saying that some sort of a, a really bad or really tough, rough or difficult, painful cycle has ended, has sufficiently ended. It's completely over, okay? The Ten of Swords is here, but it's also in reverse. The situation has ended. But it's still showing up because the Hierophant... Mm, sorry, guys, because the Hierophant here at this point is coming forward and asking you with this Ten of Swords in reverse, what did you learn? Seven of Pentacles. And I was hearing that when the when the Ten of when I saw the Ten of Swords come out, I heard I heard the energy say, what are you learning or what have you learned here? And as soon as that sentence made a, like made a, like formulated in my head, then the Seven of Pentacles came out. And this was the perfect energy to represent this or to exp explain this because the Seven of Pentacles is all about is like a checkpoint. It's also a harvestable time, but it's not the full complete harvest. So it's more so a checkpoint than a full complete ready to go done and done harvest like the whole thing is situated a whole situation is is completed because at the at the level of the 7 of pentacles you have something to show for the work that you've been doing, right? 
But this is the moment where it's like, okay, is this, am I going in the right direction? Is this the harvest that I want? Is this the type of fruit that I want? Does this fruit look like it's, it's growing well? Or do I need to go back to the drawing board? Or do I need to go back a few steps and figure out where maybe something has gone wrong so that I can get the harvest that I want ultimately when we reach the completion of the cycle? But for you guys here, or for whomever is re resonating with this reading, the Seven of Pentacles represents that review process where you say, all right, what happened in this process? And what are the nuggets of wisdom that I can take from this? What are the seeds that I can take from this to plant and grow something better in the future? That's why the Hierophant is here asking you what it is you've learned. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Knight of Pentacles to the Ace of Wands again. Okay, so look. The Ace of Wands is really showing up in the reading. Now we have all four Aces here. So the Knight of Pentacles is representing the slow step-by-step -step process that needs to happen in terms of this inspiration to move in a new direction and experience or gain some sort of healing and clarity, okay? The Hierophant is not just going to, you know, look at you, skim over your your documents or your accreditation or whatever just gonna skin over and be like bam you get the stamp keep going no the hierophant is gonna sit here and grill you he's gonna look you dead in the eye and he's gonna say what did you learn how did you accomplish this does like and, and it's not like he's asking you that he's it's not like he's saying this to you to be a hard ass and just to be a dick and you know what i mean no he's not doing that he wants these energies want to make sure that you are consciously aware you really have really gotten the lesson before you move forward. That's why the Knight of Pentacles is here, representing the slow step-by-step -step process, representing the energies of taking it one step at a time and not moving forward until you've completed this one so that you have everything fully under your, ba under your belt. You are fully prepared for the next step. Okay, this is not about being mean. It's not about punishing anybody. It's just about, it's your soul guiding you to, to the wisdom that you need so that you can continue to move forward and flourish, okay? Excellent. Uh, eight of Wands next. Okay, we want to clarify the Eight of Wands next. What's the Eight of Wands? Yes. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Six of Wands. Victory, overcoming challenges is what I just heard. To clarify the Eight of Wands, now remember the Eight of Wands did fall face down. So this is ultimately where we're heading. This, we're, we're moving towards, or you're moving towards this level of clarity, okay? This clear, open space for you to move forward towards what it is you're inspired towards. Again, we have the Seven of Cups. We also have that with the Fool in Reverse, with Death. That, sorry, with death that came out and fell on the all of the aces with the Wheel of Fortune, okay? And then finally one card left. Yes, the last card that came out is, uh, it has fallen face down. So this is a more of an internal energy, okay? But it's the King of Cups, all right? So, so what the Eight of Wands here, in order to get yourself to this clear and open avenue of just being able to, to move forward without any, uh, without any restriction, it's taking, it, it, it's, it's also represented by the fool here. But the fool is in reverse because you're not ready to take this leap of faith just yet. Before you do that, you've got to go through a big, you've got to go through a pretty major emotional transformation. You have death with the king of swords. Two Scorpio energies, okay? So, and, and Scorpio energy is very important here because it's the Scorpio energy that, which is ruler of the eighth house, which is... Um, which is the occult, the depths, what's hidden underneath the surface. And it's all about understanding that and bringing that to the surface, uncovering that, okay? There is a, there is a strong emotional process that you have to go through right, right now that's leading you towards a greater sense of emotional maturity and emotional balance in terms of this Seven of Cups energy, okay? So what is it going to take to get to this clear and open space? Doing the emotional work and going through the transformation that you need to do. Uh, that you need to go through doing the things that are difficult to do that are not the easiest thing to do but they are the right thing to do and they're going to lead you to victory okay excellent last thing i want to clarify before we uh, wrap up this reading here is i do want to get a little bit of clarity on the ace of pentacles the ace of swords the ace of cups and the wheel of fortune yeah okay 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this clarification. Last bit of clarification, please, Spirit. What is the ace, these three aces here with the Wheel of Fortune? What do you want to tell us about that? Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, Ace of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Page of Cups. Knight of Wands is in reverse. Knight of Swords is upright. Interesting. Uh, five of Pentacles. And finally, one last card that's face down. King of Pentacles. Okay. Um, this is all in terms of lack mentality. Five of Pentacles. This is, it, this is what it feels like you're changing out of. This is what it feels like you're fighting against. And what I'm getting from this is that you have the Knight of Wands here, but the Knight of Wands is in reverse. The Knight of Wands is representing your drive forward. The mission ahead is what I just heard, but you're not ready to take that yet. You're just, you're not quite ready to take that yet because there's still some of this fighting against the impoverished energies, feeling impoverished, feeling lack mentality, feeling not good enough and all that stuff. You're fighting against that. And you're standing up for what it is you truly are, who it is you truly are, and what it is you're truly capable of. King of Pentacles. Okay. Page of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. Page of Pentacles is underneath that. And then right back to the Eight of Wands, you guys. All right. So this is definitely a brand new start for you. Page of Cups is representing the dreamer energy or is also representing um, your emotional awareness. Okay. The, the awareness of your emotional reality. The Page of Pentacles is representing the brand new level that you've reached, where the, 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 the new, this is like, this is like you've just gotten to a new level here, and kind of what I'm seeing with the Eight of Wands now is you're going through a process of um, purifying or like disinfecting or, you know, you know, like you reach a new level and now you're crossing through this barrier or this 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 gateway or like this and you're going through this initiation process that's kind of absolving you of all of the heavy shit and all of the, the burden that was part of the past cycle which is represented by this five of pentacles you can't be you can't take that with you into this next vibration it's too dense it's too heavy so you're needing to release that and you're needing to gain a, a solid foundation in who it is you truly are as a, as a human being, as a spiritual being, having a human experience, okay? And so in order to do that, you have to fight against this little stuff, this stuff so that you can get this, uh, this direction or this, this, um, I don't know how to describe it again. I don't remember the phrase that I used before, but the, the Knight of Wands is your drive forward, like is the mission ahead. There we go. So in order for you to really be able to get into the mission ahead, you've got to cut away all of this stuff that holds you back. Okay. A lot of dense materialistic type stuff too, the King of Pentacles. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. What are we doing for Oracle Guidance then, guys? Crystal Mandala. Excellent. Let's close this out with some Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck, yes? Excellent. Here we go. I'm give this five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit, for this collective reading. There it is right there. Card number 29, which does boil down to an 11. Ascended Master Kuan Yin. Oh, I'm sorry. Ascended Master Kuan Yin and Pearl. Divine Rebel. Beautiful. So it would definitely be a feminine energy that would come in to help fine tune the masculine. And there's a level of unconditional love that's coming through for 
this. Um, yeah, it literally just feels like unconditional love that's helping like nurture your inner masculine sides back to good health, balanced and positive health, yes. But 29 does also boil down to an 11, guys. Okay, so let's, let's, let's get into this here. We bring you the blessing of the divine rebel. Divine rebels shake things up, create a divine disturbance, and refuse to play by the, by the rules. They do this because they love divine love. They know there is nothing as powerful as the unconditional love of the divine. It will have its way in the world, in the hearts of all living beings. It will not be tamed, controlled, restricted, or denied. If there is a rule that gets in the way of that love, then the divine rebel will find another way so that love can have its way. The divine rebel in you is not meant to do things the way others say you should. Some people may find, may become frustrated with you because they won't know why you have to stand up and speak your truth. That's okay. Divine rebels are not always understood, but they are respected by those who are ready to make love more important than fear and who are willing to contribute constructively towards healing the world. The divine rebel does things that break stereotypes wide open. They dance when they are supposed to be sitting still. They argue when they are supposed to be quiet. They are serene when they are supposedly meant to be enraged. And then they, and they get angry when they are supposed to be calm. This is natural for a rebel. They are not trying to be different for the sake of it. They are just going against the grain and don't play, don't play to type because this is how they were divinely designed. Part of your life purpose as a divine rebel is to show others there is another way. That the conditions the mind, the mind places on the world about how things should be done can and should be challenged. When the Oracle of the Divine Rebel comes to you, you are being acknowledged as one of those, as one of the ones who are different, who are and who are here to stir up living, loving truths in your own particular way. Maybe you are the black sheep of the family, so to speak, and don't necessarily fit in completely to any one social group. Maybe you seem to be just like everyone else on the surface, but underneath you think differently, and maybe you worry sometimes that you are even a bit weird. Or perhaps you know you are a divine eccentric, and you are perfectly comfortable with that. You may even celebrate it. No matter whether your divinely rebellious nature is subtle or obvious, you are something of an outsider. You belong here, and you have a divine family, but it is made up of unique, creative and unusual beings like yourself, rather than necessarily being limited to your biological family. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Mm -hmm.